Hey guys, support for today's show comes from Squarespace. Whether you need a portfolio to showcase your work or an online store to sell one of those new push-up titty bra things that you pull the straw, I mean, you pull a little string and then it pushes your titties together, but then it doesn't show anything else that all the love and hip-hop girls are doing. Whatever it is you need online, Squarespace has got your back. They give you everything you need to make your next move into re- <laughs> Your next move into a reality. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> Including a free domain. You can start your free trial today at squarespace.com. Just enter offer code READ to get 10% off your first purchase and let them know we sent you. Make your next move with Squarespace. They're fancy and great. Let's start the show. Well, we're back. Welcome to this week's episode of The Read. Uh, I don't have a quote this week because I didn't think of one. Uh, I've had a jingle stuck in my head and I don't remember what that is either. So I've just got nothing for the (laughs) intro this week but complaints. However, this week I will be... Lady Sugarfoot. Okay. And I'll be Regina Hall. Who is Lady Sugarfoot? I don't know. I made that up because right. I also didn't think of anything for that. <laughs> okay. So the point is that we're back and it's time for another episode of the show. Black Excellence this week. Uh, I'm giving it to Francesca Ramsey. Yes. For this news that we got of her producing and starring in a pilot for Comedy Central, a late night pilot, I might add, a late night comedy pilot. Mm -hmm. And I'm really excited, very proud of you, girl. You've worked very hard and you deserve everything that's coming your way. So I'm very excited to see it. I also heard she's the first African-American woman to host a late night show or have a late night pilot or something I like believe that because I'm, right. I'm hard pressed to think of another one I didn't do like the research behind that statement but I just kind of believed it because it sounds <laughs> it true. sounds right so you know either way congratulations on all your hard work and I can't wait to see yes. how that whole thing Go ends Francesca. up also uh, black excellence to me is that Bill O'Reilly no longer has a job on Fox News <laughs> but did you have something no, no, I'm just stunned that you put Bill O'Reilly's story under black excellence. Well, technically, it's Maxine Waters. Uh, oh, she's the excellence. And no, it's really course. just, it's also like a, an excellence. It's an excellence of blackness in general. And just the fact that you hoes can never like try as mm-hmm. you might. That's true. Uh, the universe is just, it's in our favor. You were laughing and <laughs> guffawing and doing all of this raggedy shit. Almost knocked your own wig off. Talking shit about somebody else. And mm-hmm. the universe came right back around and bit you in your own ass over some shit that you did that was completely unrelated to this. So we won't miss you. Piss off. And you got what you deserve. Nah, 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 nah. Amen. Um, this week in sickest, saddest world. Somebody sent me a link to like some, was it a six April t-shirt or something I need to buy? What? I don't know, but I'm fully committed to the name for now. Uh, mm. Is it all bad? It's not. Okay. Well, let's see. Bad, pointless, good, mm-hmm. bad. Okay. Terrible. Okay. <laughs> A fool. Okay. <laughs> so it's like, all right. So all there's right. one piece of good. Let's just start with that. Yeah. Serena Williams is a piece of Woo! For some reason, I thought that was going to be the black excellence. <laughs> Both. Sure. That means it's a great segue. Mm-hmm. Uh, she posted a photo on Snapchat with, you know, first of all, she's wearing a, a yellow like bikini and I'm just someone who loves yellow on brown Mm -hmm. I've always loved it I've always thought that yellow on brown skin just it's just our color yeah she looks amazing she looks amazing and she's got a little belly bump and the uh, caption on the photo says 20 weeks (laughs) 
which led uh, what is it? The New York Times <laughs> to post an article that says, "Was Serena Williams pregnant when she won the Australian Open?" Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's looking like yes. It's looking like she was, honey. And <laughs> going right back to number one in the world. Look at this blessed ass fetus, man. Can you imagine? If she's twenty weeks, twenty weeks, that means she's due right around Beyonce's birthday. And I will personally implode if she has this baby on September fourth. I just don't even. Know I'm just how to saying. Talk this I'm yet. just saying. It's just a lot. I'm saying there's a Virgo in there, and I'm hoping it comes on that day. That would be excessive yeah. and great. <laughs> I cannot wait. I'm so happy. I'm so excited, man. The greatest athlete to ever live, living during my time on Earth and pregnant at the same time as Beyonce is carrying around these iconic twins. And what Beyonce is over there looking like? Get them Lord. Out, right? <laughs> get them out yeah over the past couple of weeks everything is swollen and just kind of like how she was looking in that eight eighth and ninth month with blue ivy yeah when it was like okay and she's got some months to go Does get she it not? out i mean <laughs> nobody really knows how far along she is i know because it's twins and you show more when you, with your second pregnancy and you show more with twins so it's like maybe she's seven months maybe she's almost she's due. gonna be a house Man, As, but she's I know just, she loves every I can't, second of it. I cannot it. wait, man. I'm just so she's excited. still out here wearing whatever and <laughs> posing and giving you a back and a clavicle and all these. Oh, the Easter pictures were so cute with Kelly and her mama. But even then, she looks like, <laughs> right. That's I have saying, been like, carrying this load for so long. <laughs> I would have been like, I'm not doing, I'm not coming. I'm at home. <laughs> I'm just not going outside, actually. Laying on my side <laughs> until they get out. I'm, I'm just going to be sitting here eating cheesy poofs and waiting on these kids to decide that they're done so this is way less relevant okay but i only did that because i thought that you know let's start with the good news because the rest of this is kind of like a progressive snowball of bullshit garbage okay did i order it in like i think it's decent all right so this is the one that i said pointless um apparently mtv is bringing back fear factor where they had people eating like live cockroaches and stuff, and like, like bull testicles. Oh right, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Like rabbit dicks and all kinds of weird shit on there. <laughs> Why? And laying down in in uh, cages with rats or whatever. Mm-mm. So that always seemed like some white nonsense. I never I watched and that show. Every episode with a black person was always the funniest, especially like <laughs> black women, because black women you only had like a handful <laughs> of black girls who because we get not going to the eating section and actually do it like a couple of them would like beast through it like i'm winning this money <laughs> and then a couple of other sisters were like this is where i walk off it was so nice for y'all to have <laughs> had me had a here. really good time all i know is i made it through that first challenge so mm-hmm. you know i'm proud yeah. of myself it couldn't be me Anyway, so they're bringing it back. Apparently, May 30th is when it premieres. Here's the fun part. It's going to be hosted by Ludacris, who is also serving as executive producer. What? For I see why you call this story pointless now. Because what is the purpose in that? I mean, I thought it was pointless to simply bring back Fear Factor. But then to have Ludacris as the host and executive producer, I'm very confused. <laughs> Apparently, he has a deal with MTV which a development deal but this is a show they already did before so that don't make sense either and they didn't even do it um oh what was it on abc before or something it was like on that? nbc nbc uh okay well i won't be watching it again so i but won't congratulations to ludicrous i guess but it says the new installment will feature new stunts inspired by urban legends popular scary movies and viral videos from today's cultural zeitgeist via deadline.com so oh, i know Lord. i'm not watching this bullshit. <laughs> nope this don't sound like it's for me like what the fuck all Mm-mm. first of all I'm getting tired of, like, all of the remakes. You know, some things are fun to see them come back. And then other things is just kind of like, y'all just couldn't think of shit else. I know so many people who have fantastic ideas for television programs, movies, books, Mm -hmm. games, and the like. And you bitches are just like, okay, well, this made some money at one point. Let's try and make some more money out of it. And then you make it worse by turning it into, like, a Snapchat version of what it used to be. I won't. 
be there. <laughs> like, w- let's just think up some new shows. I know they're doing a remake of Coming to America, which I really no. don't know how that's going to work. And apparently, Eddie Murphy ain't even know nothing about it. So then, I so just keep it then, girl. If I, Eddie Murphy is not in it, then keep it. Take it all the way back, bitch. I saw a screenshot. I think that his daughter, like, texted him and about, like, the rumors. And he was like... I'm doing a sequel to what? <laughs> and I'm like, they posted it. I don't know if that was real or not, but mm. I d- not, that's another thing. Not everything needs a sequel. Plenty right. movies are classic and they're great the way that they are and they don't need another one because we'll watch that one for re- for, like, for the rest of ever. Right. I will watch Coming America until I am on my deathbed. It's fine the way that it is. Like You don't need a color purple too. No, we don't need no, for you to absolutely do not. sequels to everything. Leave our Negro classics right where they are. Eve's Bayou. Uh-uh. Back in the... No, like, no, no, no. Back in the swamp. Right. No, no girl. We don't... Not everything needs <laughs> another oh God, one no let's just think of some new ideas please i just but anyway. i mean yeah okay All whatever right. you know it's like at least i'm not being asked to pay for it or anything like that mm-hmm. uh black man get your money i heard that Ludacris is like making music again and i'm definitely less interested in that than this show so <laughs> whatever it is that you plan on doing with your life great Okay. I heard they're doing like a Love Jones sequel. Like, what the fuck is? Did you hear about them getting what? Nia Long's ass together on the set of Empire? Or well, the, oh, the, I heard that Nia showed up with like an attitude, like she was bitchy she was to like the being PAs or something, all day, right? And, and Taraji, Taraji was like, "No, we don't do that over here, bitch." I'm not filming with that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, on one hand I hate to hear that but on the other if she was being stank and a bitch and Taraji got her together then I love that and yeah, I, I want the I want the iPhone footage to leak alright so <laughs> was it last week Alicia Keys is in some more trouble for uh, tweets um, oh god so the other day when was this, April 15th so just a few days ago Alicia Keys tweeted very short uh, real bodies equal gorgeous. I was personally annoyed by the fact that there was no space in between the equals and the words. I don't know why. I, just I don't prefer, like that like, either. It just bothers me. Because it's correct to have the space there. So right. when you don't do it, I wonder why that is. Anyhow, <laughs> so real bodies equal gorgeous. Because you did that on purpose. Like, the iPhone will, will put a space there. You All went you back have and to deleted do is it. Tap the, like, Let it do that. This isn't, it's not a mathematic equation. So we don't need you to, anyway. It's fine. No, I, I share your annoyance with that. I was just like, am I petty for feeling like this is aggravating? <laughs> like, just... This is more aggravating than the tweet itself. Right. <laughs> anyway, so she posts that, and then it's a photo of Marilyn uh, Monroe. I don't know why I was so close to saying this. <laughs> but... <laughs> I'm sure his body was real, too. <laughs> right. So she got flames on Twitter saying, you know... <laughs> Um, all bodies are real bodies. What kind of feminist are you? Oh, God. Um, Seriously? What? Surgery shaming. I even saw a tweet saying that she was being transphobic. What? Yeah. How? Well, that one, that, okay. So when I first saw that, I was like, wait, okay, I'm extremely lost. <laughs> like, I mean, I was please like, explain it to me. How? I'm assuming that you are se- essentially saying that a real body is gorgeous in this in the the realm of femininity or womanhood and as a transgender woman your assigned body is not a real quote unquote woman's body so, like that's wh- that's how i'm getting at it cuz i didn't ask the person what you meant i decided right. that like i mean but it doesn't say real women's bodies are gorgeous, right? Or here's my issue with the whole thing. I, I feel like they're all lives mattering. This okay, I do. I kind of feel like they're taking what she's saying in the incorrect usage of this equal sign <laughs> as her saying that only real bodies are gorgeous, or that there's something wrong with you know the rest. And yeah. just by reading what the words say, that's not what it is. Right. That's not what she's trying to say. So I kind of feel like. What I feel like they're misinterpreting the message behind the tweet. Yeah. And I think it was more so to say, like, hey, girl, whatever body it is that you were given yeah. by God. Like, your actual body There's is nothing wrong fine. By, right. Because I don't, 
I saw that tweet and I scrolled right on past because my only thought was, why would you put Marilyn Monroe of all people as a visual Thank representation? Thank you. <laughs> Once again, it's not the tweet, Alicia. <laughs> it's this photo that you decided to use to back the tweet up. Right. Because the last time that we talked about her on oh, a tweet, God. it was that woman wearing the niqab and she had her leg out or whatever. And, we were and like, I so still think that was her. That, I won't. I We're not even going to go back and forth about <laughs> that lie. I just won't allow it. I still believe it. She had on lashes. The doll doesn't wear lashes anymore. (laughs) She just doesn't. Whatever you need to tell yourself. The same way, like, and that brings me back to this. Like, people were giving her a little bit of hell when she was not wearing makeup anymore. And she was talking about why she didn't wear makeup. And she came forward afterwards and she was like, if you want to beat your face, girl, I don't see anything wrong with that. I just don't want to be mine. And if you think about it, that makes sense. So I... I don't have no issue with that. Just like I didn't really have no issue with the tweet other than of all people... Marilyn Monroe, I just don't... Marilyn Monroe's had work done. And... I mean, she's super dead and so white. And it's just like, you could have picked so many. (laughs) (laughs) She's been dead for such a while and she's so white. Like, yes, you could have used a better example than that. I think the tweet would have gone over better had she picked somebody who is not already exalted as like the standard of beauty in society. Like right. kind of like the issue with Kendrick and talking about show me something yeah. natural but then putting that super pretty girl in the video. Like if you're going to say real bodies are gorgeous, I agree with you but like let's show some people who have real bodies you know that show like actual shit has happened to them. They're not all thin or curvy or whatever. Like that's more the issue to me. This, the rest of this, like surgery shaming, bitch. What girl gone somewhere? Yeah, that was the only thing, like you said, that had me bewildered. Was this photograph? <laughs> right, the photograph. <laughs> the photograph. I was just like, what? <laughs> like Alicia Keys wrote this tweet <laughs> why I'm telling you that that bitch <laughs> smokes some something fire great it's really nice it's like, I don't know if it's a hybrid if it's like a pure sativa I don't know what it it's is. probably her own strain that she developed at home named and after grows her. right there in the back right it's what she named it after Keys her kids Kush. <laughs> right? she is getting yes. blazed and she just tweets the first like she's just like hmm this is a message. <laughs> she was like hitting the blunt, like, you know what these kids need to know? That they ain't gotta go to the DR and empty their savings accounts right. to get some new hips. Fuck that. Okay, Alicia. What? All right, girl. This wasn't as bad as the last No, one. it wasn't. Not even it wasn't. almost. <laughs> <laughs> last one. I didn't know y'all was calling her transphobic and all that, though. Good girl. Girl, they gave it to oh. her. But most people were like, what's a real body? Everybody's body is real. And I'm like, bitch, semantics. You know what the fuck you she's know talking what a, about. I mean, does she have to say real, 100% organic, all God-made parts? <laughs> is that what we have to say? <laughs> right. With, like, molecules. Okay. And uh, I've never had anything added to my body. Does that make y'all feel better? I'm just okay. All right. I'm gonna let the kids have it, man. I'm just just don't let me be next. (laughs) Apparently, Lala and Carmelo Anthony have separated, Mm. and the divorce is down the line. There are rumors that uh, Carmelo Anthony cheated and got a stripper pregnant. Apparently, a source close to Carmela told Page Six that that is not true, uh, saying, quote, yes, he's not been perfect, but the baby with a stripper isn't true. So now the rumor has switched to him uh, getting a woman pregnant who is not a stripper. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, literally, it has, like, now they're yeah, saying, no. oh, well, but she's not a stripper. I'm like, they did that on purpose. They're like, that rumor of him impregnating a stripper is not true. Right. She has an office job. That is right. <laughs> Damn it. Get it right. Met her at a desk. <laughs> Um, this is sad it is um, they've been together for a long time and they're a super cute couple and um, Cayenne's adorable Cayenne is freaking adorable so cute god and Lala is good friends with Trina so I feel like a and I've always liked Lala to her. me too even her reality show that y'all said was boring because she was it too was. good I didn't think it was boring though it was boring and it was boring for that very reason and it's not Lala's fault it's just like I actually commend her for being like I'm not doing all of that wine throwing ghetto ass mm-hmm. all 
all up in my business as bullshit. I'm just going to do a little day in the life of thing. But the problem with the reality shows that are like a simple, cute day in the life of thing is that they're boring. Most people's every day we going about life is most. boring. And no shade to Lala. Lala doesn't have a life, an everyday life or lifestyle that is like super, I'm like really interested you know you're, it's not like you are a stunt woman i mean or doing fancier stuff than the rest of us but not right like, god let me tune in and see how was that photo shoot exactly yeah, so i get it it was i mean i just couldn't watch it but i like her mm-hmm. the first couple seasons i was really all in and, and her dyke friends that was fun of I course like- <laughs> that's why he would love it and poe and dice are ver- both and very dice. nice um so, yeah, the only thing I've been thinking about this is that it kind of sucks that you are going through a hard time in your personal life and everybody is dissecting it and picking it apart. I mean, I know that that's the norm and it's average or whatever, and yeah. it just comes with having your business in the limelight. Right. But if I, Right, that part must be like, so I'm dealing with something really awful and now everybody knows about it. The whole world is tweeting me and tagging me on Instagram and they shitty memes and all this. I bet her phone is on Do Not Disturb. She's probably only talking to three people. I saw a, a meme that was like a picture of LeBron whispering something to Carmelo and the caption said, um, does this mean you lost the only ring you had or something like that? <laughs> I don't know enough about sports, but I'm assuming that he's never won a... <laughs> championship oh that's a good one you niggas is stank that's really fucking mean <laughs> well i mean is it because i don't oh, I just, please I've said i just don't have worse. too much right i don't, I don't have too much sympathy for carmelo in this situation although i also never thought that he was being faithful to her i just never got that he looked like the type of nigga to cheat he got a cheating face I was walking through the village one time i want to say with xd and he was we were by that fucking uh basketball court that all the trade be on that's like across from Village Underground and Carmelo oh, Anthony was one. riding in the opposite direction on a bike, on a bike and yeah. it was the first time I had ever seen him in person probably the only time I've ever seen him in person and I've never thought that Carmelo Anthony was cute no shade I always kind of thought that he looked a little dumb but I mean, mm-hmm. he's an athlete. So most of I mean maybe that's what the cheating face looks like that kind of slightly dumb you know I'm just here to smile and play ball kind of face right exactly yeah um but seeing him in person was like, all right. I get it. Okay. Now that is a man. <laughs> For that second that he was <laughs> rode by us and that on that bike, I was like, oh, I get it now. Okay. That is a man. <laughs> all right. That makes sense. But he probably felt the same way about himself, and now here we are. Either way, I'm sure that Lala and Trina are going to have uh, wine and they'll do fun things on a yacht yeah. and class. <sighs> I just feel for Lala. Sucks to be faithful to somebody that wasn't even thinking about you like that. Um, Chris Brown uh, is in some more trouble for being violent. No way. Kel Are you serious? Caprice. <laughs> what? Shocker. What is it now? Apparently, Chris Brown was at a club. Um... Where was it? Was it I don't Stop want to make up the going place. to the club. Tampa. Man. He gets in trouble at home, though. Tampa Club. I don't know if it's Asia or Aja. It's spelled A-J-A like Aja on the new season of Ru- RuPaul's Drag Race. Okay. And she should have gone home like two episodes ago. <laughs> I can't like, girl, I'm sorry. Anyway. I haven't seen it. Um, So he was making an appearance at this club. And at one point... The photographer for the club was taking pictures in the VIP. And we know uh, Chris Brown has a history of reacting to cameras like he doesn't want to leave the sunken place. Right. Like the nigga flips out when he sees a flash for whatever reason. So according to the quote unquote victim, he says he was trying to take pictures of Chris and his entourage, I suppose, in the VIP section as the bottles were coming out because that's the picture, you know. Right. Um, and I guess at that point, he says that's when Chris Brown uh, basically told him to move. Okay. This is the club photographer or just somebody? Who no, phone? the club photographer. Okay. So he was hired to be there and take pictures. Yes. Okay. Which is why he's in. Just the making sure that, that I got this. 
together. No, no, no. I get it. Because I'm looking for a reason that Chris is not totally in the wrong here, but I haven't heard but it But I yet. mean, my nigga, come on. You're Chris Brown. While this is happening, mind you, there are one million cameras right in front of him okay. from everybody's smartphone. Got it. And a million flashes. You're Chris Brown. You're at the club. Photo. Photos like, will be taken. Period. Yes. I don't know what. Anyway. So... He says that Chris Brown told his ass to move and he decided to then get up into the DJ booth, which is right above the VIP section. And from there, he's taking pictures of the crowd. Uh, Apparently, that wasn't far enough for Chris. And the man says at some point his security comes over and there's actual video footage of them swinging on him. What? He says Chris swung first. But there's footage of them swinging on the boy and then they like busted his lip. So, of course, the boy is now speaking to lawyers. Of course, because cha-ching. Duh. Time to get paid. Um, (laughs) That's what I would have done. Soon as I felt that first punch hit me in the face, I would have been like, yes, Lord. I would have just leaned back. (laughs) Me too. And fall to the ground in slow motion. Hit me again. Money, 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 money. (laughs) Money. I would have been so hyped. You got to hold it in, though. You got to fake like you're devastated. Right. But on the inside, I would have been like, bitch, student loans paid, IRS paid. (laughs) The club even had to release a statement to say, like, bitch, we pay the young man (laughs) to do this. This is his job. That's why he's in VIP, Chris. And he was only there for a few minutes, apparently, before he swung on this young man and bounced. So I don't know if... I don't know if it's a lick for a lot of celebrities now to go to the club, you know, get your money because you were there and then find some kind of a crazy reason to leave. Because Chris Brown's not the only person. There's a lot of stories I've noticed over the years of artists or whatever random celebrity being booked for a club appearance. And then randomly, for whatever reason, there's some kind of a fight or a scuffle or something ain't right. And then they leave after a couple of minutes. But I'm certain they still get paid. Right. So, I mean, but, so he performed? No, he was only there for a couple of minutes. I don't oh, even think he was booked God. to perform. Wow. He was just booked to be there. So you just went to to the club and decided to write somebody else a check. That was just your whole goal of going out that night. All right, anyway, past that, I really don't give a fuck about what Chris Brown should do at this point. The thing I, that that entered my mind immediately, and when I tell you that I had like an hour-long conference with myself about this when I first read this story, <laughs> I'm like, okay, what is it gonna take for this young man to start making different decisions because not even I understand having like bad habits. I understand having a temper. I have both of those things, but I feel like after a certain point, you just have, I feel like we all naturally would just change certain things so that we don't always land. Continue to fuck up. You exact. I mean, Mm -hmm. I'm not getting it. If I had the opportunity to ask Chris Brown a question, the only thing that I would ask him is, are you, have you made any changes in your lifestyle to keep yourself out of trouble? And if so, what are they? If he says no, Mm -hmm. I'm really lost. If he says yes, then I would imagine that they are small, minute things that just they don't. They clearly right. do not work. Right. But I, I only go to the club once a week now. Right. Exactly. <laughs> or I just do a little coke. Like, <laughs> like, whatever. It's just, it's clearly not efficient. Right. But he has to be doing, I just don't understand how you're continuing to get into these issues. Like, I mean, I do because he's still relatively young. He doesn't have anybody checking him. Everybody around him basically is agreeing with him and, and enabling him to do what he does. He's very famous. He's very rich. He has a drug problem. He has a mental health problem that he's not managing. You put all those things together and you get Chris Brown. No. I see it. I really I, do. And I absolutely hear what you're saying. But I still feel like Nat... Because... Without people telling him no and all of those things, he still gets into trouble. Mm -hmm. Everybody else could tell you, nigga, punch that nigga again. He doesn't face any real repercussions. And when he does, it doesn't make a difference. He went to jail and came back and got right back to the dumb shit. But people are talking about you negatively 
people treat you like you ain't shit. Like, even if you still get to go home and ride all your go-karts and your 15 cars and braid your baby hair and watch your Netflix on the giant screen, yeah. whatever, you still have to deal with public perception. And that affects you every time you leave the house. That has to be, even if it's a tiny bit frustrating, it still has to be frustrating. And I know it is because a nigga will complain about it. Every time somebody says something about him doing drugs or being high or this story or the next, he'll get on Instagram and talk about, I'm good. Look at all my cars. They worry about shit. So it has to annoy you, even if you don't go to jail or don't have to pay these niggas that you whoop or whatever. It has to do something. You have to be annoyed or tired of it. And that to me is enough for you to do something differently. Because to I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, all right, myself, I know the way that I am and even the, the habits that I have, a lot of them, I will every now and then do it completely. I'll shake the fucking table up and do shit differently just to prevent you from having the satisfaction oh, of Lord. thinking you know what the fuck I'm about to do or being able to say, mm, I knew that bitch was going to do that shit. Like, okay. So I just, it's like, I don't think Chris Brown is thinking like that. I think he's at a place where people who criticize him are just haters for whatever reason. Like, we wish we had his money, his cars, his women, his this, his that, the flash, whatever else. Like, I don't think he even thinks about, like, he hears people shitting on him and public perception is negative and all that. And in his mind, everybody else is hating on him for no good reason. Like, and Chris doesn't ever take like the time to reflect. Almost. Right. He never takes the time to be like, okay, I did something wrong and I need to look at why I did that, fix that issue, and then correct my behaviors. Like, even from the Rihanna incident with the Grammys way back then, like, at first he was on his fake apology tour going around, you know, no, crying and first shit. first he was jet skiing. <laughs> Okay. Let's not forget. <laughs> but once the media decided he was allowed to come apologize, he came and did all that fake shit. And when people were still like, okay, but this is wrong, then he was like, well, fuck everybody. Y'all just ain't going to let me live. And da, 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 da. I mean, and it just, I think Chris has a real issue with accepting blame and being like, okay, this is my fault and I need to do something better or different. And now he's in a place where he doesn't really have to. So it's going to take something really just... bad happening to Chris Brown before he straightens up. I don't. It is. It's what is it going really to have to be? Is the nigga going to have to die? He's gone to jail. He's gonna have, yeah, it's going to have lost. to be that close to death before he changes. Yep, it is. I just think it's ridiculous. You had security in front of you already. You know what I'm saying? You had no reason to involve yourself in this. It's just like, what is it going to take for you to be like, okay, these are things I could do differently. Or I could remove myself from these types of situations Stop so I don't coke. have to hear about this all of the time. I don't even think that would be this. Honestly, if he was sober, I think he would still have plenty of issues. I think that the way that he thinks that he can treat people in general, specifically mm -hmm. women, it has nothing to do with the drugs. The drugs probably just makes that worse. Worse, yep. I think that, you know, him just feeling like he's free to do and say whatever he wants to, the drugs just emphasize they just make that shit worse it's throwing gas on the fire or whatever mm -hmm. but even if he were to so up, that nigga will still have shit that he i just don't like i just don't think i don't think chris brown is gonna make the turnaround that he really needs to make on his own without something tragic happening unfortunately i don't see it i just don't i think about the brain a lot and it doesn't make sense because it would it would seem to me you would get mad at one of the thousands of people in vip with a camera phone in your face Instead, you mad at the one person with a professional camera. Who is supposed to be doing this? It defies this. all logic. While you are swinging on this nigga for taking pictures of you, people are taking pictures <laughs> of you. <laughs> what could you have possibly been doing or about to do that that nigga taking pictures offended you so much right. that you didn't even consider, hmm, they're going to be taking pictures of me beating this nigga's ass, which is far worse. Like what? Were you doing you lines in VIP? <sighs> No, he couldn't have been ready to do nothing other than pop some bottles. What you gonna do? Pour champagne on somebody's titties? Like it wasn't gonna be nothing we haven't seen you do before. So there's no justifying Again, what happened. That is why I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense to me. It's like I'm thinking about how your brain continues to go here. Like you know that you get into this type of trouble all the time. Why would you not be like, you know what? I don't feel like dealing with this shit. But tonight. see, you're in your right mind, and I don't think Chris Brown is. I really don't. That's not am a joke. Am I? Because many times I go to bed thinking, am I in my right 
A lot of time I question myself but whether you or not are, I am. <laughs> but see, the fact that you I do that, think a lot. I think Chris Brown doesn't even get to the point of questioning whether he is in his right mind. And you are still rational, logical, sensible. So, and Chris just possesses none of those characters. I was sitting at home like, even babies. Like toddlers, when you give them that little toy with the like the, the circle and the square and the triangle cutouts and little shapes, oh, and you like to a drop baby it in. will sit there with a square in their hand and a circle in front of them and tap that shit <laughs> for maybe an hour. Eventually, you'll look at that baby and that motherfucker will be like, you know what? This, I don't think this is the this right one. Nothing's happening and I have options. I'm going to try something else. And then they pick something else and then they put that circle through the circle and they're like, holy... Holy shit, like, <laughs> something else happened. Let me try some. So I just... Oh, man. Maybe through life, you, like, the fiber of your brain Lord. that works logic out, mm-hmm. maybe the more coke you do or the more trauma you go through or stress, yeah. maybe that slowly burns mm-hmm. out and you just lose it. When you have money and fame, you really don't have to live like the rest of us. Chris Brown doesn't ever really have to question his actions because he can always pay somebody to make that go away. So until it gets to the point where nobody can can fix his issue, he's going to keep acting like this. And it's going to take like death or dismemberment. I just don't care anymore. Like, I don't. I don't care anymore. <sighs> you punching the photographer in the club, man. Come on. Huh. Remember when he snatched that girl's phone outside That's the, the club? That's the first thing I thought of. God damn. Like, and that was years ago. Mama right. was on South Beach, a Miami native, if I, if I uh, <laughs> guessed correctly, because she sounded like she was from Miami, the accent, everything. And she was just sitting up there like, I just want my phone. Like, and I was like, <laughs> bitch, I know you from day. Because that's all that matters. She was like, I just... I would really love my phone back. I just want my phone. Like, they, that wasn't necessary. And, and I knew exactly why he did this shit at the time, too. So I don't know why. Hmm. I'm I pictures, but nigga, you're a celebrity. People take pictures of you. I mean, and you're in the fucking club. I can see if you was at Publix and you didn't want somebody taking pictures of you. Right. But even that is just like, are you not used to this? You've been around since you were 16, 17 years old. Like, one thing that, one type of picture that people do or take of celebrities that I hate is them eating. I hate seeing pictures of celebrities like zoomed real close when they sitting in a window or something at a restaurant. Mm-hmm. You see them like putting food in their mouth because I just feel like taking a picture of somebody while they're eating is rude. Period. It doesn't matter who they are. I just feel like that is okay. just disrespectful. Yeah. But I mean, it's just an unflattering angle for almost everybody. How are you just going to show me mid shoot, nigga? Like, leave me alone. Can I eat? Like shoving something into your mouth. I just, and Paparazzi then now with the meme age and Photoshop being easy as fuck for a toddler to operate, that just turns into all <laughs> kinds of horrible things. It's just inconsiderate. But oh. that's different. That is when you are in a place where you are minding your own literal business right, right in front of you in your plate. Not when you are lit. You're making an appearance somewhere. You are appearing. At a nightclub. Which means that people have come here to see you. <laughs> Did you really think people would go pay extra? Because you know the club was higher than normal that night. Of course. Did you really think niggas was paying $30, 40 $50 to get in and not at least get a picture of you? But the one person with a real camera. Okay. Never mind. Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck I just it. don't understand Chris Brown logic. not going to learn. He not going to learn. Logic. 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 <sighs> Speaking of. So the last story of the day. Um, apparently there's an Instagram model by the name of Layla Lace. Layla Lace uh, posted some information on Instagram a few days ago, alleging that she uh, is currently pregnant with Drake's baby. Mm. She says that she was introduced to Drake through a man named DJ Spade. Uh, she posted some screenshots we have a conversation between her and the DJ Spade. <laughs> and on bas- Instagram. On Instagram. Of course. And basically, uh, he let her know. For, <laughs> this is not. <laughs> I want to say something. <laughs> so petty. <laughs> but I don't want to offend anybody. <laughs> How offensive is it? On a scale of like one to ten. Lau, well, you know what I want to say just by looking read. at the screenshot. Look at the screenshot, it's yellow. Crystal. Right. So what kind of device is this? Android. Isn't it? It is. Anyway. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> she posted the screenshots uh, of her speaking with Drake and uh, the DJ apparently 
she got to go out and get some uh, passion fruit. <laughs> <laughs> After that whole thing wrapped up, uh, I guess she didn't hear from him in a while, and she was perturbed. And that is when these uh, pregnancy rumors came out. Maybe a day later, <laughs> like I don't even know if. Look, Drake's Drake's entire OVO entourage, Odell Beckham camp, is like yeah. a fortress. Oh yeah, it is. It's like an Attack on Titan wall that is just as high. It goes up into the clouds, <laughs> and it's like, bitch, if you're coming over here to play that game, yeah. <laughs> get ready. You've got five levels. I'm King Koopa. I'm the last, <laughs> the last Bowser that you meet in yes. this game, bitch. <laughs> That's it, bitch. You've got several bosses to get through before you see me. <laughs> That's OVO Nation, my nigga. You're not finna just go in there and that crazy so uh, i want to say like the next day a day or two later perhaps the dj spade guy posts uh a screenshot uh allegedly from this same girl um Mm -hmm. and i don't know who she's speaking to but it says uh you everywhere followers going up fast as fuck and the girl says yeah fuck them now this person says what you gonna do when they find out it's all fake though and layla says it will be too late lol publicity will make me money even if you don't want me i don't care they said they gonna hate you and she responded by saying i'm still gonna get this money (laughs) <laughs> and I love okay. that, that the response to that was you're going to get lots of bookings like Bernice. <laughs> Girl. So this was all fake. She did the most. Of course it was. And I don't know how this guy got uh, his hands on this screenshot or who this was from. Mm-hmm. But he posted it on his Instagram with the caption, the length some people will go for a moment. We've seen it all. Um, and Drake liked <laughs> sure, of course. So, of course, right. Um, well, okay, Miss Layla Lace. I can't say I totally believed it in the first place. I mean, duh, of course not. I just, when I read that, I was like, as as many pregnancy scares and rumors he, we hear in the hip-hop world, mm-hmm. Drake, I don't see. Drake seems like he has, like, patented his own condom. Yeah. <laughs> that, I was going to say, he's doing something that the rest of these niggas are not, because we just don't ever hear about Drake control. having these problems. <laughs> like, <laughs> he takes his pill every morning. He <laughs> wake up faithfully. Ov no birth control. As <laughs> in, nigga is shooting it's blanks. Not happening. <laughs> um. Yeah, I'm like, of all the girls, he could have accidentally raw dogged, or you know, he was just too drunk and didn't think twice. I'm like, I don't know if it was you, sis. No shade. So. It's no way you got pregnant before Rihanna did. Oh, come on. Well, although I mean, I'm I mean, sh- I'm not. We. I wasn't going to say all that. <laughs> but I'm just saying. I feel like Rihanna would have been like, no, wait a minute. Last person who's emotional ass baby I want to have is Drake. I don't, do I really want to? I just. Ugh, <laughs> Rihanna just, can't so... even play like she'll have Drake baby. <laughs> like, I will drop all these hoes and can't. come straight to you. Mm-mm. Right. No. Um, all right, Layla. No, there's more. What? First of all, Layla, of course. And it's funny that you bring her up, Rihanna, because. I didn't. Did, did I bring her up? You did. You did uh, that. Whatever. Um. Rihanna is very clearly, again, the baddest when it comes to this type of shit. Because Layla is another girl who is built like a Land Rover. Like a reindeer. ass <laughs> and tits. Yes. Brick house. That entire bottom half is just solid. Drake... We think, or we'd like to think that Drake got this body and started working out because he wanted to be, you know, a sex symbol and have all of that. He really did it to work up the muscle and the stamina to be able to handle the asses. The, the strippers that he, that he loves. Absolutely. Right. He was just like, look. He was too frail for them girls. I got to raise this. Uh, I got to get my endurance up. Right. I got to <laughs> start deadlifting or doing whatever the fuck you got to work on leg day. The ropes. <laughs> <laughs> because the, the way I like ropes. them built. I can't handle all that ass. Got to get this. <laughs> That's real upper though. Body together, <laughs> lower back. Let me. I be wanting to pick these hoes up and have them on the right. wall, and I can't do that. I can't and do I that. I just yet. don't have that upper body strength. I'm telling you, that's what it was about. I mean, and I would not be surprised at all. Um, Layla responded by saying, "Fake DMs 
Like, wow, you already fucked up by bringing a female that you only met in two days around your mans. You're looking bad out here, DJ Spade. Don't be mad because you got exposed too. When you and your mans are ready to stop sending me threading text messages, I'm here. Didn't leak those, but I will if I have to. Then she posted a photo of her stamped uh, passport that says Manchester on it. Oh, and a, okay, we don't we believe that you fucked him, right? But that's we know that part. I want you to give birth to this baby in a DNA test, and you're not going <laughs> That's what I want to see. That's all. That is all. She said, "No need to lie about being in Manchester with a jerk." I had a lot of respect for her until he showed me his true colors. Yes, he is. A, Uh, amazing artist I won't take that from him but on a personal note it's a different story that's all I'm saying stop being so quick to judge if you haven't even met this man thank you so essentially what Layla is saying is no I am not pregnant but I'm mad that I didn't get a call back and so fuck that so I'm mad but you had to know that Drake who is probably the single most popular rapper in the world right now you had to know Drake was smashing so many girls who look just like you and like why would he that probably is not even Drake's phone that's probably one of the hoe burners that they have just around OVO compound out <laughs> that's question. not even Drake's real Rihanna has Drake's number you don't have Drake's number Drake probably has like several other phones beside yes. his personal phone that are all like separated by ass size like, <laughs> like, color coded like huge <laughs> giant goddamn like three different <laughs> phones and you were just in one of of those <laughs> and he said what's your ig oh okay yeah come to manchester <laughs> that's literally how that happened girl like are you kidding me it's crazy like you couldn't fuck drake and then just be happy about that and go home bitch, because that's what i would have done tell you bitch i would have went home with a story <laughs> let me tell all my friends everybody come over because i had a tale for you hoes about and how just drake... <laughs> you bitches yeah. you girls who can keep a secret <laughs> right and i'm saving the rest of that for my grandkids and i'm switching the story around and saying you know drake and i we had a fling one because you know you got to keep it classy (laughs) (laughs) and that's enough like why why you got a memoir 30 years later why you got to fuck a rapper and have your lifestyle changed like why you couldn't just fuck the rapper enjoy the fact that you got to fuck Drake and lots of people want to and then go home and be happy about that I feel like Drake's sex is good I really do I get that feeling (laughs) listen not for nothing but I'd never forget the line where he says, this long dick nigga ain't for the long talking. Oh. I was just like, somebody has a story. <laughs> and I just want intimate details. No, because the girls who can be trusted are not running their mouths exactly. about the intimate details. Not yet. Bitch, if I was pregnant with Drake's baby, let me tell you, I wouldn't tell nobody. Because I don't want no hating ass hoes to try to come up behind me and try to push me down the stairs or nothing. I'm keeping that a secret from everybody, including Drake. Thank until you. Until I have that baby. <laughs> I'm not telling Drake neither because you're not finna have hire no hitman to come get me. That nigga gonna be like Miles when he was on Martin like, Martin, you're my dad and I'm not going to Arizona. <laughs> like, <laughs> my baby is going to knock on Drake's door during one of them house parties. Odell Beckham doing backflips in the pool and shit thinking the shit is sweet and my baby walking there with a suitcase like, well, which room is mine? Oh no. When my child is about three, four days old, I'm gonna hit him up with the, just so you know, we can do this, the personal cute way Way, or I can get the lawyers involved. <laughs> but I've given birth to your child. And please feel free to have a DNA test. We, we can do that. But see, even if I was lucky enough <laughs> to carry Hashtag blessed. an Aubrey fetus. Go, okay. When I tell you that I'll be like, look, this baby is yours. Um, I imagine that you're going to take care of the baby or do your part. In At least financially. I don't expect you to be here you know, physically. You don't no. really have to come do anything. Um, Drake seems like the nigga. Who, like Drake seems like he would absolutely go and see the baby and be like, look, so sign this NDA. I'm going to yeah. treat you great. This baby will want for nothing. Uh, I already started a college fund. It's chock full. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I would sign so quick. Bitch. I'm like, do you need like a phone? You need me to like. Uh, prick need, my finger right. and put some blood on the edge. Should we take a selfie while we do this? I have some witnesses. <laughs> like, I'm willing to look <laughs> into your seven ass and be like, it's all right mm-hmm. with me. Deal. Yes. And me and my baby will FaceTime you. Say hi to daddy. Daddy's on a world tour making us so much money. I have no Wave reason to daddy. or desire to beef with you. I don't even know how we got here. But... <laughs> 
I'm cool as long as you're cool. If she really is pregnant, she played this all wrong. She's not pregnant with nothing. She's in her feelings because she fucked Drake and it was probably great. Or she was just excited that she, she wanted got to fuck some more. Drake. And she wanted some more. She wanted the attention. Like, A, Drake is probably quite busy. Like, even... He's if on he, tour right now. He's on tour right now and he's Drake. Like, <laughs> Khaled is asking his baby every day if the vocals came in and we don't know if the answer is yes or no yet. And you worried about your own black ass self and the intention you ain't got. Drake is busy. Not to mention he's got several <laughs> other bitches that he's probably got to entertain mm-hmm. day in, day out. And you worried about yourself? Selfish. Lord, these hoes is doing it all wrong. Why can't it be me to get pregnant with a rich nigga's baby? Because I would do it right. I don't even want the pregnancy. Just let me have the memories. <laughs> that would right. be good enough for Just me. Just the dick. This is why I, could, I always say, I don't care if you want to fuck a rapper or not. If that's a goal for you, make sure that you have your own personal bag, ladies. Because there's not, there's not a single dick on earth. Drake, Kendrick, Nobody, Obama, there's not one on earth that could change the world that I'm going to play myself over. Because okay. I already know what I get to go home to. That's it. And it's a self-made situation. Exactly. And if you have similar situations for you, I doubt that you would be this press unless it was just you saw the mountains, the moon, the heavens, the earth. How does that goddamn song go? Uh... <laughs> Mountains and the rivers, I saw heaven when I made sweet love to you. you. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, during the sex, I would be trying to think about like, mm, mm, let me make, let me take a photographic memory right now so I can remember exactly how good this dick was. <laughs> I would like Drake. Okay, look, you can leave the. Can I just take a panoramic photo of the room? Like, you don't have to be in the picture. I just want to like make make sure I have a 360 memory of that. Honestly, I would sign any NDA Drake wanted me to. Any. Any I'm okay document. With that. <laughs> and if there are any ballers listening, any shot callers, I keep secrets. I don't need your money. <laughs> I don't. I don't well, need. I don't need it. But if I get pregnant with your baby, I'm definitely taking oh, it. Oh no! Like, that, see, that's another thing you ain't got to worry about with me. <laughs> no fallopian, <laughs> nothing. So, <laughs> but even if I could, whatever the documentation is, Woo. I'll sign it. I'm good. Yeah. All I'm looking for is a great time because I look trying to worry about how to keep the IRS off my own ass back. I'm just saying, maybe Drake will hear this and when Boy Meets World gets to... Wait, no. Is is that what his tour called? I think it is. Yeah. Pretty sure. Never mind. The Weekends is the Starboy tour. I got them mixed up. But anyway. Which is more appropriate because that is the name of the yeah, tour. Of his album. Boy Meets World. <laughs> it's cute, though. It's Drake. And there's it a giant like something Drake would do in the middle of the stage. Of course. Which seems like it's in the way. <laughs> like, it don't matter. It don't even matter, though. Anyway, so Layla, I'm so sorry this didn't work out the way that you thought it was, girl. But let this be a lesson to you. The next time one of these ballers hits you up in the... Uh, their D, your DMs or whatever. Somebody says, hey, uh, two chains want to talk to you or whoever. Just go and have a good time oh, and go back to doing whatever the black fuck it was that you were doing before. If you get some perks out of that or an actual baby, <laughs> cha-ching, good for you. <laughs> but don't go into these situations expecting anything more than dick because nine times out of nine, these niggas aren't trying to, Mm-mm. you know, no, change your life or whatever. They are not. So... <sighs> All right. Well, that's it for this week. Why can't um, it be me, Lord? Why can't it just be me? <laughs> Let it be me. I keep, it's I'm always quiet. these bitches that ain't got nothing. <laughs> why can't it be me? Like, why not me, Lord? <laughs> anyway, we'll be back. <sighs> Hey guys, this week's episode is being supported by Stamps.com. If you are still going to the post office, dealing with them limited hours and standing in them long lines that make me grit my teeth and want to fight everybody involved and everybody standing in their flashback, sorry, then get your postage on demand with Stamps.com. Anything you can do at the post office, you can do right now from your very desk with Stamps.com. Buy and print official U.S. postage for any letter or package using your own computer or printer and unlike the post office stamps.com never closes so you can get postage whenever you need it and you can ride by the post office and laugh real loud (laughs) yes it's so convenient I've used stamps.com before in fact I used it the other day because I needed postage to mail off my uh, I won't be filing these taxes on time form to the IRS I know that's right (laughs) 
And so with Stamps.com, I ain't have to worry about running to the post office first and standing in that dumbass long ass line. Right now, you can use our code READ for a four-week trial, including postage and a digital scale. All you have to do is go to Stamps.com, and before you do anything else, click on the little radio mic at the top of the homepage and type in READ. That's Stamps.com. Click on the mic, code READ. Never go to the post office again and stand in line like a sucker with Stamps.com. Now let's get back to the show. We are back, and it is time for our listener letters. It sure is. Send them to asktheread at gmail.com. And our first one this week is from a young lady who calls herself I Fucked Up. She says, Hi, Crystal and Kifuri. My boyfriend of five years has been asking me to have anal sex for the past two years. Oh, God. But I've always said no. Oh, God. Oh, God. It's just not my thing. And on top of that, my best friend, who is a verse bottom, told me about all the prep work, and I don't have the time or patience to do that. (sighs) Oh. Well, fast forward to the end of March, my boyfriend asked me yet again to have anal sex, and I told him no. He begged and begged, and I got so annoyed that I said, why don't you just ask Desmond to do it? Desmond being the best friend. I don't want to hear anymore. (laughs) I I don't want more. I kept asking him to have anal sex with my best friend flipping the script on him, and of course he kept saying no, but I kept asking because I wanted him to see how annoying it is to be asked something repeatedly after you said you're not interested. That was until two weeks ago when I asked him again, and he said, okay, I'll try it. At first, I thought he was just joking, and he freaked out and said he was just fucking around on me, so I let it go. I spoke to my best friend about it, and he was annoyed that I even offered him to my boyfriend in the first place. I know that's motherfucking right. Okay, because I would have been annoyed with that shit, too. Anyway, I was on my best friend's computer, and I went to his downloads to get a video that I pulled from my email, and there were some explicit videos. I clicked it out of curiosity, and it was two guys having sex. I thought it was kind of hot to watch those guys having sex, and I thought about my boyfriend and best friend and how that might be kind of interesting. This is going, like, it's like a roller coaster. Like, every time I think I know what's about to happen, (laughs) go ahead. So I asked my boyfriend again. He said no, and I begged him and told him that I really wanted to. So now you really want him to fuck your friend. Yeah, now she really wants it. So she said, I begged him and told him that I really wanted to watch and he finally said yes. I then what? Went, I then went to my best friend who immediately said to me, hell no, but after I begged him to, he agreed. I set everything up. What the fuck is happening They were getting- in <laughs> Ask the Read? <laughs> I set the whole thing up. They were going to have sex at my house and I was going to watch with a glass of wine and there were two rules. No what? kissing and only Pitch front Olivia to back. Pope, what the fuck is wrong? <laughs> Only front to back, they can't have sex facing each other. (laughs) The day came and they had sex. I figured now my boyfriend got the need for anal out of his system, he would be fine, but I was wrong. Because now he keeps asking me to have anal sex again with my best friend. I asked him if he's gay and he said no, he just likes the feeling. I haven't told my best friend yet that my boyfriend wants to do it again. And I'm concerned that if I don't let my boyfriend have sex with my best friend, that he will start having sex with other guys to fulfill that desire. What should I do? Sincerely, I fucked up. Go and find a new man (laughs) besides the one that you just turned out, you weird, weird person. You really did turn your boyfriend out. Like, you... (laughs) You basically coerced him into having sex with your friend. After he told you several times he didn't want to. And you begged both of them. He's like, this isn't a good idea. But you insisted. And now, duh, he likes the feeling he's been wanting to do it. Like, oh, girl. Just, what was you thinking about? What? This is probably, the like, we have gotten some <laughs> weird letters. Usually they're just gross. Now, when you said I fucked up and the first thing was my boyfriend wanted to have anal sex, I was like, okay, gross. Now we're going to have a disgusting letter again this week. Oh, no. This was just... I love it. Oh, layers. I don't know where to begin. I clicked it because the title said, the subject line said, my boyfriend of five years had sex with my gay best friend and it's my fault. How could I not click that? Well, duh. I have to know. I have to know. And it is your fault. That's what's crazy. Like, you did this. You didn't want to get it in the butt. Bad, bad girl. Now, let me tell you something. It is, it's... It's an uphill battle. It's, it's I was going to say, that would have been me. Like, if you asking me to, to open up my balloon knot, it's going to be a hell no. Ah! It's going to be a hell no, girl. I can't do it. Ain't enough deep breathing. Ain't enough gun oil. Ain't no enough relaxation. No, it ain't enough concentration. Just, I'm no. not going to. Because that's going to but hurt. as I've said a million times, like, I don't really know. It definitely, you know, Unless from what I know. Unless your dick is the size know, of a pencil, it's going to hurt. It's going to It's not going to feel good. 
great either way the first time. See? <laughs> because that, anyway, I Ow. don't have the time to break down the Ow. biology or whatever. I, go. I don't know. Um, the thing that always confuses me about straight men who want to have anal sex with their girlfriends or wives or whatever so badly is that you have other means. Like, you have two other holes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and right. uh, men... You know, we have the prostate spot, the G spot, right. prostate, mm-hmm. whatever, That's right. which is a real thing. Women don't have a prostate and their G spot is in the other hole. So it's like, I don't, I understand women being like, that will not happen. It just won't. I don't see the point. I don't want to. Right. You know what I'm saying? Gay men have no other choice. So. But I know there are some women who really like it. I guess it stimulates them in a different way. And I'm, you know, if you love it, then that's great for you, girl. It's yeah. just not for me personally. So I understand you saying no. The fact that you decided that. I could understand oh, you girl. not wanting to try it. And there you pro- you could have tried it and liked it. Because I do know women who also love it. Right. But I could understand not wanting to put yourself through the process of trying to shit out at all. Because even with myself, it was initially, you know, in my intro to gay, I was kind of like, this is this just won't not. work. I thought I wanted it and I didn't. I had to actually see the grass. <laughs> um, That's how I know people don't choose to be gay. Exactly. Like, what the fuck you want to go through all of it? this? Start, we're not talking about the woes of a bottom. Maybe I'll write a book one day. You but should. Either way, You sis, really should. I just don't understand how you turn it. First of all, it's extremely problematic for you to f- turn around and be like, well, if you want to fuck somebody in the ass so much, why don't you go and fuck a guy? And then for that guy to be your best friend. Right. And then somehow you ended up watching gay porn. And I know a lot of women also who love watching gay porn like it turns them on. And I don't know why, but I don't either. I'm not a woman and gay sex is a part of my real life. So I can't question. You like what you like. I just know a lot of girls that like it. So it must be a fake. Maybe it's like, wow, two dicks instead of one. I don't know. Like, but none of them are for you. (laughs) Well, I have a friend who is sexually free. I'll say that. Okay. (laughs) And she likes the feeling of double penetration. She likes one in the... One Ruda in and one in the two. <laughs> yes. Okay. That probably feels like if I were a like woman, I would be quest- I would want to know what that felt like. Yeah. There's like some things that are like, hmm. Yeah, because a thumb in your ass is not bad. Yeah, but it's a thumb. Right. <laughs> it's exactly. Like, like, a thumb so. is fine. I mean, but it took me a while to even be okay with that. I'm like, eh, I don't know. You just like, want to chill out. You know, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. We could, so just, we could just not fun in other places. <laughs> right. like we, and if you've got big tits, so much then you've to got touch. that. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Although I don't really like my titties. I don't like. I don't understand why anybody. You would. could honestly ignore my titties every time, and I would be fine with that because they are so annoying. Like they're boring to me. I don't. I mean, but they're yours. <laughs> I'm just like, uh, if I could take them off, I would. Ooh, that would probably be so great. Oh my God. If you could come home and take your titties off, oh my God. <laughs> that would be... Women across the planet would be happier. Yeah. <laughs> you could just be like, it's been a long day. That needs to be what Dr. Miami focuses on. <laughs> okay. Removable titties. Removable titties. <laughs> like, just... Find out a way for us to take these off. And just put them down. And just wear them when they're convenient. Put them on a charger or something. <laughs> Get back to them when you're oh, ready. Oh, bitch, my titties are on low. I can't even take them out today. <laughs> right. mm, no, none today. I didn't even charge the backup battery or nothing for these hoes. So, uh, what were we talking about? Oh, this You girl. then, after deciding that you love the sight of gay sex, then dis- you switched from being a... Uh, what is I lost language. I don't know. Sarcastic or oh, never whatever mind. or facetious, whatever word. Yeah, you went from from trying to turn it on its head. A mock him. Right. You and went from like trying to teach him a point to, to being, then like, being like dead serious. I want you to fuck him and I want to watch. And I want I would not want to watch my best friend have sex. Ew. I wouldn't like Ew, gross. Ew. Ew, that is nasty. With your man. <laughs> like, I mean, but not at all. <laughs> Ugh. I just don't understand why, how this worked for you. Like, I know a lot of freaky couples and just freaky people. You know what I'm saying? And I would, you know, dabble in a few things. But I would never be like, mm I really want you to fuck my home girl. Yeah. Mm-mm. And let me watch. I mean, I'll watch, but I don't want to watch people I know having sex. 
And I especially don't want to watch my man have sex with anybody who I ain't me. I watch people I know have sex. I won't watch one of my friends have sex. Okay, that's better. Yeah, I won't watch my friend have sex because that's just a private tender moment. And I don't want to think of you. I don't want to know the things you holler out. I don't want to see the look on your face. I don't want to see your vagina. Like your best. Fr- <laughs> uh, oh, no, it's just wrong. It's like don't watching your about brother. different friendships. <laughs> have different types of friendships. No, it would be like watching but, a I mean, sibling. Your man said no several times. Your friend said no several times. And then you tried to convince them to do it anyway. And they finally said yes because this man is gay. And so having dick is not foreign to him. I mean, and if your boyfriend is fine, he was curious yeah, anyway. If- and you begging him to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so. Sure. <clears throat> He wanted to try anal so much, probably for the same reason what I was just saying. He wanted to know what it felt like. And now he felt it. He liked it. Duh. Which, if you just think of the science of the body. I mean, I'm not surprised that any man enjoys anal sex because I'm sure that's very, that's a very tight area. So I'm sure it feels fantastic for your dick. I'm sure it does. I don't want to get too vulgar. Someone... I have several bisexual guy friends and I've dated guys and slept with guys that are bisexual. And somebody described the difference between them to me great one day. Because he was like, there's not like a really one that's better than the other. They're both great for different reasons. Okay. And basically, like, you can do more with a vagina, which makes sense because it has the elasticity. Right. It's made for that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Quote, unquote. Yeah. So I get you it. can really like... You can go, go in there. Go crazy without worrying about having to take this bitch to see her. <laughs> oh, you probably have to be a little more careful in there. Right. Anyway. I don't want to have to take you down to Mount Sinai or wherever I don't want to have to. Yeah, I'm going to rupture real. something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. You might still be able to kill a few girls if you don't play. Said, there's rough vaginal sex, too. Like, there's a such thing as doing the most. But you definitely can't do a fraction of that. And nobody right. will. Some people are able. Okay, well, I just don't know what kind of magic y'all must some be pulling off back there. people do some training. Okay. And they get to where they can handle whatever's thrown at them, mm. literally. Well, and you know, I've, I've seen some, some screenshots, and I'm going to just leave that right there. Either way, if your boyfriend now decides to go and fuck your friend again, oh, well, girl. Like, I don't know. I mean, obviously, he shouldn't. But you put him in a situation where he's like, he went from like begging you and dying and being excited for this experience and then you gave it to him with somebody else and now he knows how much he likes it and you are like telling him whatever about it or did she say she wanted to watch it again or she didn't want it to happen again? No, she doesn't. She thought he could, he would do it once and get and it out d- his system. That's not how sexuality works It either. doesn't. <laughs> oh my gosh, girl. You did fuck up. At least you know. You need to just break up with him. You should have broke up with him when he kept asking to have anal and you didn't want to do it and he right. kept asking. You should have been like, this ain't going to work out because you have a deep, deep desire to go in booty hole and I'm not going to give and you And I'm not going to let you do it. So we just need to end this right now. Because whether he fucks your friend or or some other guy or some other girl who allows him to do it. Anybody with a willing booty hole. getting in some booty again. He is. And so if it's now not it's yours, just as great as he thought it was going to be. <laughs> you did fuck up. You did, sis. So, oh, well, are you gay? Bitch, you asked me to do this. <laughs> and you have a butt hole. to go up so bad. He probably is waiting on her to break up with him. <laughs> He's probably like, I was just, ba- I was hoping. Like, I didn't know how to do it myself. <laughs> I didn't want you to get the wrong idea. But thanks. Lord. Bye. Like, okay. just leave him, nigga, leave him. and be like, you know what? My bad. And I hope you have a good time. And I'm sorry I brought <laughs> both of you in this for my whole, like, I hope you at least had a tweet, oops, so oh my moment and touched yourself while you was drinking the wine or something. Like, I would never be able to get the memory of my man Ugh. fucking my best friend Ugh. or my best friend fucking. Like, every time I see that person again, I'm going to think about that. But you liked it. I right. guess just not enough for them to continue doing it. I don't know. I'm Mm-mm. so lost. Yeah, no, I would not. Just leave. This relationship is over. Sis. It's done. All right. I, I mean, is there even a need to do another letter? Like, my God, that took the cake. <laughs> Let's do one more. Hmm. Yeah, this one is a little... Mm, okay. It's definitely not topping that. This I'm is from. Topping that. 
<laughs> you know, normally I try to wait and leave the awful one Ooh. till the end, but I decided let's just come right out the gate. My word. So this sis. week, or this week, this one's from Yolanda. It says, Adams? no, Salazar? that's a fake name. <laughs> Salazar. Okay, good night. I'm emailing you about an issue I have at home with my dad. I am a student living at home with my parents. Although it does not feel that way, I am going into my third year of university and I still get treated like a child. Both my parents look at me as a child and I am still not able to do anything without their permission. Like. What is worse is that now it's income tax season and my dad uh. usually files my taxes. But what I found out a couple weeks ago is that while he's filing them, he takes a large portion of my refund money mm. as well so that I do not receive the full amount that I was supposed to. This year, I decided that I was going to go somewhere to get my taxes filed instead so not that bad. they could do it for me without, so I wouldn't be robbed from my father. And when he found <laughs> out about it, he got so angry and told me that I cannot do that because I'm still a student living under his roof. And then if I go to a tax Incorrect. office, they will not file my taxes because That's they need his in order to do it. He true. also told me that if I go somewhere else to get them filed, he will not give me his income tax information when I reapply for student loans. Without that, I cannot receive any financial aid and I cannot afford to pay for school out of pocket. My question to you guys is what would you do in this situation? Thanks. Move. Yolanda. That's, listen, Yolanda. You're, that's it. Kiff your tongue only, right there, girl. The only. Because what your dad is probably talking about is that he still claims you at, under as, his taxes because you're dependent. Down. And, and if you're like living you at their house, right. If you're living in under their roof, then you technically are dependent. Depending on them. <laughs> right. Because they're paying all your bills. So if you want to file a single and, and get all your money back by yourself, you're also going to have to separate yourself from them like maybe not if your parents were were more well I don't even want to say reasonable because if I'm paying for your rent and probably everything it doesn't sound like you work anything more than probably like a part-time job so it sounds like your parents are taking care of you in that way I don't know, girl. I feel like, like this, this is... would be more. I would be more understanding, maybe, of her side of things if she did. I mean, I don't know, but like if you were out on your own and had things that you needed this money for, like real, you know, right. rent and all of that type right. of stuff, then I would be like, girl, yes, guess who's fine? Yes, yes, is fine. Okay, sure, all phone? right. Is it on silent? Guess who's fine? Guess who's fine? Okay, I'm done. Thanks and. <laughs> Yeah, like it sounds like you would be using this this income tax money to to do what? You know what I'm saying? Like I don't know to you have just fun. Want all your money, yeah. I mean, like I get it. I do. You know as much money as you can get. But I had some similar moments like that too, where because my mama also my mama is a CPA, and so she was doing my taxes for a while. And be plenty of times where I like I really want that new PlayStation, and I just need this. And if I were my mama was like, well then get your ass out. <laughs> <'Cause> like, <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> because no yeah. and that made sense like in the you are their dependent right. and whether they're being harsh about it or not you know sugarcoating shit for you yeah. they're allowed to do that you know what I'm saying so you tell me you want all your money but it sounds like they just want their money back <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> them allowing you to like claim yourself or or whatever would be like a privilege like that that, yeah, would, that would be, be them nice being nice to you you know what i'm saying because there was maybe one year where my mom was like okay and i think it was because yep it was because i needed a macbook and i needed or wanted that macbook specifically for work stuff mm -hmm. and my mother was like fine <laughs> fine she had two other dependents so like okay this one can go <laughs> few this year cool. but i'm thinking back on it and i worked from 14 15 years old and Me i too. never got any tax refund money and i mean i'm sure i probably you know got back a few hundred maybe up to a thousand dollars maybe i don't even know that i never right. saw that my mama was like well i'm the bitch who bought the car <laughs> In the first fucking place. I'm the one who's been paying for you to live all these years. I mean, it's not like you could ever really reimburse your parents for the money they've spent on you. Right. And I would just, I mean, I see why you're upset, girl. But if you want to be a grown woman and get all your shit. money back, you got to, yeah, you got to put yourself in grown situations. And trust me, there's no rush to come out here and try to get a job. At all. <laughs> and None. be miserable with the rest of us. <laughs> None <laughs> at all. Oh, count them blessings and I take like, whatever you for my, get. Thank you for my two fifty, Daddy. Shit, <laughs> I, I can't even think of the last time I seen a refund. How about that? Grown. 
<laughs> yeah, girl, I'm sorry. I know it hurts, but until you out on your own, taking care of everything on your own, then you can get your little money back. But. And that seems like one of those things that when you have your own kids and this thing comes back around, you're going to be looking at them like, I don't give a fuck <laughs> about any of what you're talking about. I know you didn't come to me talking about that's <laughs> my money and I'm stealing from you, little nigga. Let me tell you who been taking. Let me tell you who has been giving Do you know how much money I house. have spent on your alone black ass every year? Do you know how rich I would be of if your not life? for you? <laughs> I could have been places. I could have gone to places. I could have seen the fight in Dubai. But your ass. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> You are so dumb. <laughs> well, that's how I feel about that, girl. All right, yes. Let's just end the questions there. Send yours to asktheread at gmail.com and we'll be back. the booty passer out decided she wanted to have a hold. <laughs> just passing out ass. Hey guys, today's episode of The Read is brought to you by Loot Crate. Loot Crate offers an epic range of pop culture items for less than 20 bucks a month. Whether you're shopping for the geek in your life or if you are that geek like me, Loot Crate is the best surprise you know is coming. Every month there's a different theme and new exclusive item you can only get with Loot Crates. In the last box I received some very fancy items including an Overwatch shirt that I love that says Primal Rage on it. And... My new favorite item is the Steven Universe underwear that I got <laughs> with uh, Ruby and Sapphire. Oh, yeah, those on the are front really cute. And Garnet on the ass. Expect to see that on Instagram. Um, the upcoming theme for May is Guardians, featuring items from Guardians of the Galaxy 2, which you can't wait to see, Star Wars, Destiny, and The Goonies. And of course, one lucky subscriber will also win a mega crate featuring a premium format grot figure from Sideshow Collectibles that stands of 22.5 inches tall and that's just one of the mega crate prizes that they do every month Crystal will tell you more well Loki I'm hoping I'm the lucky bitch who gets the mega crate because that sounds amazing I'm not even totally sure what it is I know I got some real cute stuff in my loot crate like little Ninja Turtles pizza purse and it's like shaped like a slice of pizza it's really cute and some adorable Batman socks all kinds of stuff you guys have until the 19th at 9pm Pacific to subscribe and receive that month's crate and when the cutoff happens that's it it's over you missed it so make sure you go to lootcrate.com slash read and enter code read to save $3 on any new subscription today that's lootcrate.com slash read offer code read save three dollars on any new subscription you might get some really adorable steven universe draws like kid fury does you can be a thought on instagram like he's gonna be yep. again lootcrate.com slash read offer code read let them know we sent you and let's keep going this week is also being supported by squarespace whatever your next big idea might be count on squarespace to help you create an eye-catching online platform that brings it to life that's right whether you are trying to showcase your work or sell some fenty puma knockoffs squarespace <laughs> provides all the tools you'll need to look like an expert right from the very start including a unique domain and with you squarespace's award-winning templates creating a beautiful website is a simple and intuitive process there's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade. You don't have to worry about a million tabs and plugins and all of the likes and the witch mm -hmm. and the such. And if you come across any technical difficulties, you can depend on Squarespace's award-winning 24-7 customer support to help you with any problem. Think of them as your very own IT department. Yes, and they have been very helpful to me personally because I have needed help doing something that probably was super easy. And they don't judge you or anything. You just send an email and somebody gets right back to you with an answer. So go ahead and make your next big move by starting your free trial at squarespace.com today in our offer code read to get 10% off your first purchase again that's code READ to get 10% off your very first Squarespace, Squarespace purchase squarespace.com make your next move with Squarespace and the read and let's wrap up the show we are back and it is now time for the read it is and I'm honestly not even totally sure that I have one this week it was gonna be Charles Barkley but then he clarified his comments so <laughs> what the fuck does she do oh god you know Isaiah Thomas's sister died in a car well we probably don't know yeah. Isaiah Thomas is a basketball player okay his That's sister died know. tragically in a car accident one day before the uh, one day before they had a game I'm trying to remember who they played but I think it was Miami but anyway the playoffs are going on so oh, really? yeah so it was so he was on the sidelines you know visibly upset before the game crying and being comforted by a teammate and Charles Barkley was like you know this makes me uncomfortable to watch and something else and it just seemed really insensitive and fucked up and then he came back a couple of days later and was like oh I was just saying I think it's fucked up because 
It's you know, sad. he shouldn't be right. Like it's a sad thing. Like it makes me sad to see somebody that sad, and you know, maybe he should be at home or something like that. It, it was something that made me less angry at him. So. Now I'm not really sure I have a read. So, <laughs> well, speaking of basketball, I could Google what Trump's administration has done. In I'm the past. sure you'll have plenty, <laughs> <laughs> like a week's worth. <laughs> Meaning we can sit in here. for Oh a God, week. they deported some dreamer. Did you see that? No. Oh my God. Oh, he's such a piece of shit. <sighs> anyway, go ahead. <laughs> um. So I don't know much about Gilbert Arenas. Besides the fact that he says stupid things a lot, and once upon a time he played basketball. Oh yes. Um, there's an Instagram uh, page called Pro Black Thought. They posted a photo quote that says, "Dear Black girl, you don't have to be mixed to be beautiful." The caption says, "Your African features are all you need for attractiveness. Never tell yourself or let anyone tell you that in order to be attractive, you must be mixed." Gilberinas uh, left a comment and said, "How black are we talking? Not to be funny, can you name a beautiful black woman on the outside? Not brown skin like Tyrese Black. Top fifty most. I don't what, what the fuck. What f- not fi- top fifty most beautiful women of off all time. The darkest <laughs> women they have is Keisha Knight Pullman." A.K. Rudy, <laughs> Gab, Union. I wish you could see. Like, I don't know why he put these people's names in parentheses. And then, like, the, it's just, it looks. He probably can barely write. <laughs> I'm sure this is very illiterate. It is very clearly. <laughs> like, he put Gabri- Gab in parentheses with two parentheses back to back at the end. <laughs> And then he don't know how to use parentheses. Other, he doesn't know what a parentheses <laughs> is, and he's using five million of them. Like, what are you doing, bitch? And it probably took him thirty minutes to write that. Comedy. Exactly. <laughs> then he says, "When you say African features black, then you have number one Lupita Nyong'o, and she's cute when the lights are off." What? Second is Ajuma Nasanyana, sorry but ew. So the beautiful black women you try to boost up is technically light skinned or brown skinned. Wow, what a piece of shit. This pissed me off for several reasons. Um the the reason it pissed me off the most, I mean, first of all, I don't care about Gilbert Arenas, and I'm just kind of annoyed by the only reason I ever hear him hear of him is because I see a screenshot of this dumbass name no chill you and then some dumb shit follows and it's like you don't do anything else <laughs> like you but anyway. you're not cute I'm sorry I I'm sorry am getting <laughs> go right ahead the thing that pissed me off the most is that I remember watching a video of Ajuma talking about uh, growing up and how her skin color affected confidence and the way that she looked at herself and boys not wanting to date her or get Valentine's Day cards and even being a successful model and people telling her how gorgeous she is, she still has trouble, you know, feeling that way on the inside about herself. Mm -hmm. And so for you to come on the internet afterwards, looking, when you look like (sighs) a a toe knuckle... (laughs) And then come up on the internet and try and talk about anybody else's looks. I just feel like it's time uh, for a hashtag. Uh, stop ugly niggas from judging. 2017. <laughs> Amen. Like, you just don't. I mean, even if you were fine out of your motherfucking, you know, out the frame. Right. You have no business attacking other women or their looks or their features, especially for being a certain uh, skin tone or for having African features or whatever. It's just ignorant. It's dumb. It's pointless. I'm tired of it. I'm sick and tired of black men attacking black women simply for being black. Like that's the whole, you're the <laughs> right. only thing you're saying for about this black. is that they are black and they so black and so African that they ugly and they're never going to be every black woman who is attractive is light skinned or brown skinned, mm-hmm. which I'm so tired of hearing because it's all brown all of it's brown every color is brown there are different shades of brown when you say brown skin you talking about most of us bitch because it's brown (laughs) past that you know i don't really feel like i need to get into like the meat of why i feel like this whole thing is problematic and gilbert gilbert arena is is a clear dumbass and he 
came forward afterwards and like tried to he came up with this ashy ass apology talking about I never say sorry for shit but I I read this wrong and got into my feelings I thought it was saying if you're mixed you're not considered black and beautiful and my kids are mixed and dark skinned so I perceived it how I wanted to you did perceive it how you wanted to it ain't nobody's fault that your ass can't <sighs> read or you know it's not the fact that your reading comprehension is in the toilet doesn't it's no Nobody's problem or fault but yours. And if you are saying that your kids, your same kids that you also said fuck them kids on like a, a phone call oh, that leaks. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah, I do remember that. Good but anyway, is garbage. Um, them same kids, you're saying that your kids are mixed and dark skinned. And then you went on to attack dark skinned women. I don't understand mm-hmm. what you're talking about. But then he later on said some shit like, where is it? Um, I guess he has like a girl or somebody in his life that got him together over it, basically. And he said, well, because she, you know, is somebody who won't attack me in public, but will get me together in private, then blah, blah, blah. And I know that was wrong and I deserve anything that comes my way and blah, 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 whatever. You don't know any of the reason why you're actually wrong. Right. You know that people are dragging you as they usually do and somebody who probably gave you who you were lucky enough probably to get some ass from. It sounds like judging from this. Mm. Because you ugly and dumb and disrespectful. And yet somebody still wanna fuck you. You don't even play basketball anymore. Uh now you're acting like you have a change of heart. No, because ev- this whole explanation has nothing to do with what you actually said. Even if you interpreted it the way even if your interpretation was the way you're claiming it was. Mm-hmm. What does that have to do with you attacking two other whole ass women who ain't saying nothing to nobody and talking about they Lupita only looks good when the lights are off? Bitch, well, I guess you ugly, broke, and blind. Uh, like, okay. Because we have been celebrating these women and their fineness for quite right. some time. Lupita is fine, beautiful, black, and employed. <laughs> The fact that you have the nerve looking like that to say anything about Lupita Nyong'o's face. Like a long pinky toe. What you mean only fine with, like, Lupita is fine from every angle in direct sunlight. Every color. (laughs) She does not look bad ever, period. What the fuck is you talking about? What are you talking about, you ugly bitch? Like Your baby mama ain't nowhere near as fine as Lupita Nyong'o. And that's a fact. She can't touch Lupita on Lupita's worst day. Fuck is you talking about? And that's somebody who you decided to have children with. And that's no shade to her. It's just a simple fact. Right. So what are you even talking about? And why did you feel like you needed to come on here and say that shit? If you are so busy or so concerned with protecting your kids, then you go and pass on whatever moral messages and things like that that you feel like you need to pass on to your kids and leave everybody the fuck else alone. You wanted some attention because you ain't got shit else to do. Mm. And you decided that you were going to come on here and misspell a whole bunch of people's names names and other English words and look just as dumb as your ass actually is. Nobody needs your uh, opinion. Nobody cares. Black men, white men, green men, purple men, orange men, black women, their beauty, their value, Mm -hmm. their worth ain't no business yours. Mind your business, know your place, earn your spot. (laughs) That's a quote from somebody else. But, (laughs) <laughs> that's what it is like bitch nobody why are black women's beauty and their and and what they're worth and their bodies and all of that stuff always put on a chopping block for everybody else to pick apart and dissect nobody gives a fuck about how you feel bitch you're not even and then on t- and then to top it off i'm tired of seeing all of these horseshoe face ass niggas talking about what they deserve and what a real bitch is and how beautiful this one is and she ain't really cute because look at her thumbs and oh this one's edges and blah 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 you would be so lucky <laughs> to get a howdy do okay from most even of the blink. women even just a have a nice day Nigga, bye. a side eye even from 99% of the women that y'all be trying to pick apart and trash on social media. And I get it's funny and it's cute or whatever to you and plenty of the Gilbert Arenas and whoever the fuck, just because you got a blue check next to your name or whatever, you'll get pussy from somebody. And it's a sick, sad world. Mm -hmm. That's why we say this shit. But... (laughs) Let this be a lesson for the rest of you motherfucking niggas that are putting the lemon and the pepper on my wings, bitch. 
Nobody asked you. Nobody needs it. Oh, God. I just Googled the Instagram comment, and it is just as ignorant looking as you said. What are all of these? Par- Why are you putting these people's names in parentheses? You brought Serena Williams into this? Oh, no. Mm-mm. Serena's a far better athlete in her sleep than you could ever dream to be. So you might want to chill out on that also and as well. Wow. What a dickhead. If you called Keisha, Gabrielle Union... Any of these women and ask them how they felt about Gilbert Arenas. Most of them, I would assume, would say who? <laughs> and then Google that real quick. <laughs> and then once that you showed them a photo on Google Images of who this was, they would probably laugh and say they don't give a fuck about how this bitch feels. I mean, because l- you, the nerve. And I, again, you I are wanna, black as shit. You are nobody's light skin mixed. Not, n- what? You dark skinned and ugly. Let me and not all uh, and you not ugly cuz you dark skinned. You ugly cuz you ugly. And so You ugly cuz your face is arranged in an ugly way. I'm just I'm confused and I'm just sick and tired of the bullshit. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, you have every right to think somebody is cute and somebody else is not cute. But for you to sit up here and come and try and attack somebody else or attack not even just these individual women, but an entire group of women that look a certain type of way and say, well, they're not beautiful because I can't read. (laughs) (laughs) Retire yourself. Not like you already retired or were retired (laughs) from whatever it is that you used to do. And I heard like Shanghai or some of the girls over there took you and then spit your ass back out or whatever. But girl, we don't need any more of this you have black ass daughters this is what's blowing my mind like and he said that in the he was like oh well you know because my my kids are mixed and dark skinned then so then what the fuck so are then you talking why about? did you spend all of these moments <sighs> ignoring so that red line underneath them words to then come <laughs> here and attack dark skinned women <laughs> like that makes no sense again logic I'm looking at his two dark ass, beautiful daughters right now, wondering how he found the space to say this about somebody else's child. Like, niggas are really dumb. This is why I implore ladies, you women, just please stop letting these niggas have any sort of effect on your self esteem <laughs> or self worth. Cause these niggas are straight up fucking stupid, girl. You gonna listen to somebody this fucking dumb? Gilbert Arenas shitting on black women. Who hasn't women. been in an arena? And who knows? <laughs> shitting on dark skinned women. I'm sure he's born of a dark skinned woman and has dark skinned children. And is dark skinned his damn self. What? <sighs> this is why Janelle Monet said you can't get your pussy these niggas no more. That's, and I laughed because it was strike, funny to me. But the pussy strike is real. This is why. The pussy strike. Pussy strike 2017. This is why. Y'all niggas are making it hard for yourself. I'm good. I like dick. And there's no shortage of it. So I don't have there's to try no and shortage of dick. any of these women out here to give me a chance because you fucking it up for everybody. Like Mm-mm. when these girls say, you know what? We've had enough. Go yeah. and find the rest of your Iggy's with asses this big or pay for them yourself. Cause. But the problem is there's always an ignorant ass light skinned or white girl somewhere who don't care that you shitting on dark skinned women. Cause they're like, oh, <laughs> he not talking about me. And yeah, y'all's dark asses is ugly. He, he, he is always a couple of them birds somewhere in the pocket ready to fuck him and make him feel like what he said was okay. Well, I hope they can make greens. And I hope they can do everything <laughs> that's lit about black culture. You will culture. never have cornbread again, nigga. Now Except what? the kind with kernels in it. Oh! Speaking of which, I also have another read. And I um, know what it is. I know what it is. Kelly Kapowski has lost her <laughs> whole ass I mind. Knew. And the bell ain't saving her ass today. <laughs> Let me tell you something. She had the nerve. I knew it. To suggest that people. Met for, okay, so I don't know how to pronounce her name. Tiffany Thessalonians. Tiffany, I think Thesson. Whatever. She. Thessalonians. Has like a cooking show, I guess. And she, first, oh, she's no. still super cute. Like, she's really adorable. She is, but let's stop giving thin white women cooking shows. Let's stop that. <sighs> um, she suggests that people <laughs> make guacamole with grapefruit in it. And I'll I just want to ask her, Tiffany. <laughs> I'll slap you. <laughs> why 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 ruby red grapefruit and sunflower seeds sunflower seeds what in i'm sorry in guacamole 
Is something wrong with mashed up avocado and lime juice and diced tomatoes? Is something wrong with that? Oh my God! <laughs> leave! So my other read is white people leave ethnic food alone. Yes. <laughs> Mexico never did anything to you. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that they ran uh, Saved by the Bell reruns out there and watched it and kiki and laughed with Zach and the gang or whatever. They never did anything to you for you to come and destroy Guac. Like, why? Grapefruit? First it was apples, now grapefruit. And do you know somebody... Oh, tri- peas. Did you see yes, that? Yes, that too. Like, girl, what? Somebody slided... Slided. Somebody tried... <laughs> I'm talking like Gilbert. (laughs) To say, oh, well, you know, she was simply substituting uh, the tomatoes, which are a fruit, uh, with grapefruit. And I don't see, like, what the big deal is or whatever. Uh, I was like, girl, uh, uh, first of all, she's not substituting the tomatoes for anything because I think that she still put tomatoes in this. I could be wrong. But even if she does, Tomatoes. tomatoes and grapefruit taste so different, girl. Tomatoes like, are far more bland in flavor. Like, they have a much less distinct, sharp flavor than grapefruit does. How do Which you... is why you have to remind people sometimes, people who aren't me because I'm not dumb, girl, that tomatoes <laughs> are a fruit. <laughs> but the fact that you needed to tell me, I mean, oh, but you say tomatoes, <laughs> which are a fruit. Like, that doesn't that have... Fruits aren't all interchangeable. You can't be like, oh, the recipe calls for tomatoes, but let's just get some bananas instead. Like, right! <laughs> like, also, okay, so if you were making a salsa, would you say to do the tomatoes for grapefruit? <laughs> no, girl, because that would be disgusting. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you talking about? Stop it. Leave it alone. Guacamole is fine the whole ass it's way. It's already a that thing. That it is. I have had guacamole made. Oh, God. Right in front of me in the little, the little. Yes, with the pestle thing. Yeah, where the, they just. They, mm, yes. In the, the Flintstone. Bitch, let me get to a I want burger. one of those. I went to like a Mexican restaurant, like an authentic one one time. Mm-hmm. And they made that shit in front of me. Yes, it's delicious. I, like, I don't know what you call this shit, but I want one. I I mean, and when I they slice the avocado right in front of your face and just make it. And then just it. put it right in there like, with so the lime gonna, and a little cilantro, a little and this garlic. this is delicious. Oh, my God. This is so good. A little tomato and just. Never once have the Mexican people presented me with a grapefruit option. And you are allowed to do what you want to do. But I feel like when you suggest that I try it, it's disrespectful because Mm -hmm. I have guacamole. Guacamole has been around for a long ass time. Mexico put it out and they were like, here, girl, I guess y'all can try it because I guess we can't keep it from you (laughs) or whatever. (laughs) So you you can have some or whatever. And it has been delicious the way that it is Mm -hmm. this whole ass time. And here y'all come trying to make new shit and try other shit. And oh. You never know until you try it. I'm not trying it. I don't have to try it. I have guac. It's not like something that I've never heard of that's like brand new. Right. And I'm going to another country or another state even. And this is something that's just the gonna... only way to try it is this. No. Grapefruit? Like chunks of grapefruit or grapefruit juice? What is grapefruit? Like the segments oh, no. of no. the grapefruit. That would ruin my and guacamole experience. sunflower seeds. I don't want to try it. I'm good with the guac I got. Why do we need a crunch in the in the guacamole? Use chips for that. She must be looking for like some kind of low carb guacamole snack. <laughs> I heard that she's like instead of chips, she used like uh, green peppers or oh, bell peppers. Oh my god! Because they hold up like a tortilla chip. If you don't give me some fucking chips and quit playing, <laughs> Tostitos makes the scoop kind now. I don't even have to try. Her. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? I knew it was some fake healthy shit though. I knew that y'all of always try. Uh, no, no, no. Never. And somebody retweeted some shit that I saw. I don't know whose idea this was. Cornflake Jamaican sausage fried rice. Kiss what? my ass. What? This ain't got nothing to do with Jamaica. Nothing <laughs> to do with Jamaica. Cornflakes? I have never heard. Cornflakes. <laughs> Jamaican sausage. Whatever that is. <laughs> I was gonna ask. And fried rice. You took... A, a cereal. <laughs> you somehow Jamaican sausage and then said, let's just toss it in some fried rice and said, hey. Do Jamaicans eat fried rice? I thought Jamaican fried rice was like a thing maybe and I just never heard of it when you first said it. But bitch, what is Jamaicans it? can fry rice. Anybody can. But when you typically think of fried rice, 
You're not like j- fried rice is not a staple in on the island of Jamaica. Yeah, fried that's, rice that's what I'm wondering. was fucked up and perfected by Asians. <laughs> Everybody knows this. Yes, just the same way. As far as I know, cornflakes is an American cereal. Cornflakes in rice? Who the fuck needs Jamaica's corn and crazy. rice? Cornflakes in girl. What is Jamaican sausage? Let me Google Jamaican sausage. <laughs> I don't know it. I've never. I know that there is sausage in Jamaica, but I don't know of a sausage uh, movement in the <laughs> island that's so crazy that you just say Jamaican sausage and I know what you're talking about. I'm assuming that they just took whatever ass sausage and just put jerk <laughs> seasoning on it. The very first entry on Google says a Jamaican's man penis. A Jamaican man's penis. <laughs> I mean, it's probably the first thing that comes to mind. Was it like a jerk sausage? I'm assuming that they just jerked some, like they just put some jerk Mm. sauce or seasoning or whatever. A white person is behind Because you can jerk. Of course. Cornflakes and rice, bitch. What? Not even a black American would put no. cornflakes in fried rice <laughs> and put sausages in. No. It. This is disgusting. And the fact that you would not only in, involve Jamaica in it, talking about the crunch of cornflakes, <laughs> the jerk of the Caribbean, and the softness of rice Hell present no. a most unique dish. <laughs> yes, it's unique in the fact that I will never be trying it or suggesting that anybody else will. And you can kill Kiss my ass for putting this up on the internet. Corn flakes and uh-uh. rice with sauce. That sounds like one of them creations white people come up with for the office potluck. <laughs> like it's a casserole <laughs> with a crunchy topping. If there's one thing I don't miss, it is an office potluck. Ain't that it? Oh my God. I've never been so glad as when I moved to, I feel like they're much less common in New York City. <laughs> oh yeah, probably. But when I lived in Oklahoma, nigga, they still stayed with a pot look the businesses here like especially like a good a business with like some money money in it, they'd be like, oh, like catering. when it comes to a pot look yo, just call Mm-mm. Nobu or one of these people cause we know most of y'all don't even really have kitchens like that right so just, <laughs> we'll just bring some steaks with some wings or whatever yeah, like, yeah they don't not. do pot looks like that here at all not pot luck, no girl Let's, the owner of the company is gonna get on grub hill uh, real quick and right. just get something for everybody absolutely maybe a, at least outside of a uh, uh, Manhattan, you right. know, the Brooklyn where things are normal <laughs> for the most part. Things not Williamsburg, are, yeah. further down. Yeah, not there. <laughs> Way further, further down. Further the actual Oh man, because I saw an ad on Twitter the other day for an apartment in Crown Heights, a new building, studio starting at I think 2600, one bedrooms for 2800, something like that in Crown Heights, my nigga. Does it come with an invitation to Bitch. meet the twins when they're born right, in the okay, hospital room? Okay, okay. Because are you at your fucking mind? Do I get to name the babies or what? Oh, a studio? I wish I would pay in two, Crown Heights two thousand plus dollars for a, a month. I don't give a fuck if it's a luxury or not, bitch. It is a one room apartment. What are you talking about? Twenty three hundred dollars. I'll slap you and your mama. Well, but that's that, just white people ruining. That's Brooklyn. it for me. White people leave ethnic food alone, please. Yeah. And if you're going to cook it or make it or put it on your shows, your recipe pages, at least stop doing all of this Caucasian Adventure Time <laughs> bullshit that y'all be pulling, throwing random sh- acorns and pastas and Caucasian and putting mother- <laughs> like right, <laughs> putting fucking algae and shit and 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 tacos. You weird motherfuckers, leave people's food alone and do that shit with the green bean casserole that you've had your whole life yes amen all um, right hot dogs and mac i mean hot dogs and i mac like is kind that of good yes. it is pretty i tasty. like beanie weenie too it is pretty good it is just good it just tastes it great just, i mean i kind of want some right now i mean just do and do more of that yes <laughs> white people just take poor food y'all are good at taking poor foods and coming <laughs> up with something edible <laughs> But don't take nothing we already have and, and remix it with your white ways because it just it does not turn out well. Bitch, cornflakes and rice. And they be so excited too, making fucked up guacamole and wearing sombreros and shit on the Food Network. <laughs> be like, just bring, you know, See? Latin America to your kitchen. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. It's only two Stop white it. women I trust on TV with food, and that's Ina Garden and the Pioneer Woman. Say it <laughs> again. Because I, every Thanksgiving I watch, because that's how you know whether white people can cook. They Thanksgiving special. Contessa and them bare feet. Okay, now she, now that bitch is a legend. <laughs> she is an icon. <laughs> but Re is from the backwoods. To Oklahoma, <laughs> and she'd be like, "Well, we finna sit here and make cornbread from scratch, and if you don't know nothing about this, white people, then get out your cast iron because you cannot have dressing without cornbread." And I said, "This white woman gets it." And see, that is the. There are so many 
country cooking ass white people mm-hmm. that I don't know how like how did how did Kelly Kapowski get a show making putting grapefruit in guacamole man how did that happen it's probably I don't know is it like a network that's like mm, jazz it up do something we haven't seen before do they pressure you <laughs> to do when you're just like well I have a grapefruit and I was gonna make some guacamole let's <sighs> see what that's I don't know Mm-mm. what it is I don't even care if it doesn't taste Mm-mm. bad I'm never trying it right because I like guacamole the way that it is it tastes fine the way that it is and there's no reason for me to try it any other way amen so no and I'm done All right, that wraps up this week's episode of The Read follow us on Facebook Twitter Instagram and Tumblr at This Is The Read check out our website This Is The Read dot com happy 420 oh yes shake your titties celebrate good times come on I'm Um, gonna be high all day uh, speaking of which we have a special 420 sale going on Yes, we do. Hashtag the read 420. Special limited edition merch is on sale, including a dad hat and t-shirt available today, 420 on shoptheread.com starting at 10 a.m. Eastern. So go get your weed read paraphernalia. Absolutely. Because (laughs) we're that kind of ghetto. Um, So go and check that out. And, oh, also tomorrow I will be in Chicago for the next stop on the Furious Thoughts Live tour. And I will see you on Saturday in Seattle, Washington, where I hear you can just walk into the dispensary. Yeah. (laughs) Remember last time we went to Seattle? Yes, I do, but I forgot. It's been like a little while. (laughs) It has been a while. So uh, I... Maybe I'll stay a little longer. Maybe like one day. Maybe like half an extra That's going to be fun. I don't have anything to rush back to this time, so. At least stock up on some really good edibles, stuff like that, because good shit out there. Absolutely. I was impressed with the with the quality of marijuana in Seattle. So yeah. Have a good time, friend. That's going to be absolutely fun. absolutely will. Um, do you have anything else? I don't think so. Okay. Well, Fran and I are up for a Webby Award for Insecurity, the podcast we did for uh, the first season of Insecure. Woo. So, if you liked Insecurity, you can vote for it at vote.webbyawards.com. Of course um, you did, so go vote. The category is podcasts, and then they have subcategories under that, so it's a recap podcast specifically. Um, and also, I want to thank Charlemagne for having me host his uh, one of his book events this week um, up at YouTube on Monday. I did read his book, Black Privilege, despite the name. And it is. Look, <laughs> I bought the book despite the name. Yeah, because I and I, <laughs> the first question I was going to ask would be, "What is this name about?" But then right. he answers it in the book. The book is only about ten or eleven percent problematic, which for Charlemagne is <laughs> incredibly impressive. Yes, and uh, actually, I really like truly enjoyed it. It gives a lot of backstory to that nigga's life, and um, it's just you know, I just it's a good read. It's it's crazy to see how he came from being like just another garbage ass nigga out here to kind of changing his life and, and becoming focused and dedicating all that. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, mm-hmm. congratulations to Charlemagne on the release of his, of his first book. And yep. yeah, I think that's it. I don't think I have anything else. Shout out again to Francesca Ramsey doing big shit, her own show coming to comedy central girl. I mean, from shit white girls say to black girls, I've seen this coming for you. I mean, and obviously way before then, but this is just like, it's so exciting. So congratulations, sis, because you out here doing it. Why did somebody say R.I.P. Aaron Hernandez? And then they posted a photo of God, what was his name on Jersey Shore? He was the only one who like nobody really The situation? No, not Jersey. Not the, he looks kind of like Aaron Hernandez, which is why it's funny. Oh, that ain't right. Oh God. Uh Vito? N- Tony? It was a, it was, was it a, it was, mm, he was the only one who was like, he was, I forgot he was there half of the goddamn time. And then he ended up doing guy code all, all the time. Oh yeah. He did an episode on Common Sense last season. Pa- no, Polly D's the DJ. No, it's something else. Mm, it starts with a, a J or a K. Reg. What is this? Let me Google. John, no, not Johnny. Jersey Shorecast. Gosh, um, uh, what was that boy's name? S- S- R- 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 no, Ronnie's the one. Mike? No, Ronnie. No, no Vinny. The one who was always Vinny. <laughs> I think it's Vinny. It's Vinny. Yep. Oh damn, he does kind of look like Aaron Hernandez. <laughs> oh, that's fucked up, though. Rest in peace. Only a little bit. I mean, Aaron Hernandez. Mm, I feel bad for his daughter. That's a compl- Yes, I feel sorry for his family, but 
That's a sad situation and a sad story, so I'm done. All right. Well, we'll see you next week. Bye, y'all. 